this presentation as a part of a joint project between Computational Institute and the Enterprise Initiative, and all opinions are uh, generally spoken about the and the and they should be held responsible for that. <laughs> now, before I go into this presentation, it's been kind of struggle to explain why economics modeling is so hard to, especially to people with natural science background. So I've been struggling with it for a while, and then my friend offered one problem which kind of illustrates the difficulties of economic modeling. So let's imagine the government comes to you and says the moon is shifting away from the Earth. It's going to cause lots of disasters, and we have a great idea. Let's put rocks on the rockets and let's fly them to the moon, and that probably can stop the moon from shifting away. Now, if you're a physicist and you are not allowed to use any equation or any number, like, what advice you can give to the government? What's, what's your idea? There are three possible cases. Will the project is the escalation of drifting away? We will stop it, or will it nothing happen? Um, you can play this game with a lot of physicists. Joshua, you are a physicist. What do you think would happen? You fly rocks to the moon? Yes. In order to increase the moon's gravity? No, I know that it would like, stop the moon drifting away from the Earth. But I think you wanted to put rocks on the moon. Yeah, to increase its mass so that it would yeah. increase the gravitational interaction? No, there is a non-linear interaction between the masses, right? The M, that is multiplied by M. So the mass of Earth is much bigger, so if you put some to the moon, the force will increase, right? Yeah, <laughs> sure. But you can also argue that you can burn some fossil fuels and then the mass of Earth is going to be so tiny that you can tell it a little bit. So basically, you can argue, see, as, as soon as you take away equation and you take away numbers, you immediately, even in natural science, you get kind of like economics problems. Like you start having Keynesian, you start having free market, and you can start arguing that it will infinity. So having equations, having the numbers keeps discussion and kind of in a level in the playing field and clear. So that's why we are, do, we are doing, a, we are trying to do modeling in economics, we are trying to put numbers, we are trying to put equations into things that seems to be obvious, but you can also argue until infinity is exactly opposite of that. Now, if you think that this example is very outlandish, it's very far away from the reality, we put the next slide. Uh, this is the world in which we are actually living. Okay, if you can see this headlines all over, these headlines, for example, this is unbelievable destruction of the world in just one year. Now, what's so different compared to previous times when the humankind faced like, such, such problems as hunger, wars, diseases, and whatever? You can immediately see those diseases. You can perceive them without equations, without computers, without models. If you have a ballot in your head, that's very visible. You don't need a computer to perceive this problem. Uh, all those problems are kind of not really immediately perceived. There are some guy who is running black box model, which supposedly gives you this projection. that the sea level rising up is close to the United States. Now, if you take this seriously, I mean, you should be really worried about this. In 40 years, New York and Boston is going out of the water. And if you don't take it seriously, then some measures that government trying to put into play is probably too excessive. And, but how you check whether this projection is true, is really true? How you make sure that this is indeed the right projection? Or can we get into the financial crisis? There is still a lot of theories flying around and they're not really close to the financial crisis. And every academician is pushing away his theory because he was studying certain phenomena and he immediately sees this phenomenon in this financial crisis. And of course you can see this secret formulas that is our Wall Street and you see this, for example, here's what you would call one k this Chinese guy goes in Popola function to and if you are this guy, if you are this guy, you probably don't want uh, to have too many interviews these days. <laughs> Actually this guy is now in China and he is not responding to any of those interviews because I mean, if, if people see that this is a good or kill you from 1K, people work whole life to save some money, and suddenly this guy from the world think that so something, something is not good. It doesn't seem to be very good for the guy. And what guy actually did, did it was very, very nice. I mean, 
this formula was in place for like for 200 years, something like this. And what he did is basically to come up with computational techniques that allow this formula to be computed very efficiently. So instead of running complex simulation for days, suddenly Wolstead was able to port to run the simulation as a fraction of a second. It seems like a good idea uh, 10 years ago. And, but eventually, the abuse of this technique kind of led to lots of lots of different problems. Now, coming, coming closer to economics, let's look at the another crisis, left, which was very hotly discussed in politics last year by many politicians. So, first of all, I would like to point to this quote of 2004 about oil price developments. Those guys estimated how much the price of oil should rise if you, China is, will keep growing for until the year 2030. And they get the estimate of like $2 per barrel. So like $5, sorry, $5 per barrel. And, and I mean, even if the rest of the world is, keeps growing, it will rise by $10. And the baseline price is still $5. Now, what we see in the last year, of course, was like 150. You will see that this famous economist is taking seriously that the woman lives in Rome and the price should go to 200. So how you combine this? Those are very good and very knowledgeable professional economists, and this is also a number of price minerals, right? And what, what does he have to say? How, how would he explain that this is not speculative excess, this is just what well, he has to work iron for? Uh, what does he mean by that? It means that supposedly if it's speculation and you can speculate oil, but you cannot really speculate iron ore because iron ore is so powerful you cannot store it, you cannot uh, take advantage of the market. But what really happens, I have two pictures here for oil prices and for oil prices. And you can immediately see the difference in how oil, the, how those two industries are completely different. Those are all market prices and the Prices that are in our or industry are contract based prices, so they are very really long term. So, if I'm, so why suddenly this price suddenly spikes? It's what happens is the iron ore miner comes to the steel manufacturer and says, Look, steel manufacturer, my oil, oil prices are jumping so high, my energy costs are going up so much, I cannot, I cannot, my margin is going down. So, you should kind of share your margin with me and let's push this margin back to the customer. That's very surprised. So that's how it actually works. It's not working the same way as the famous people who came to the courts. So, but on the, on the other hand, you remember the political dispute of that time, right? There was a real, real lady from one side, and there was um, what, a windfall, windfall tax guy from the other side, which was proposing laying tax on all companies. So though those two completely opposite political sides, they were wrong. They both were wrong, but they were both were wrong for different reasons. Apparently, and, and uh, by the way, the guys who also were also arguing about speculative excess, they were also wrong because they were targeting the usual suspects, which were actually driving the price down. So if the government actually go and intervene into the market and they would sh shut down those guys, the price would even jump even higher. So, so that's what you kind of see in a lot of economic related uh, policy making that supposedly good intentions can most often come with very undesirable, very bad outcomes. So that's why, again, that's why we're trying to find out what we can do about it, what we can, uh, how we can put a number on it, how we can come up with more or less reliable models for that. 